Hi everyone, my name is Amanda Thompson. I have a Facebook page called TBI Tips from Amanda, and I also am in school to be an assistive technology specialist. So I am sharing a video with you on some skills that you can implement as a TBI or O&M specialist working with students who are blind or visually impaired, teaching them voiceover uh, on an iOS device. So we're looking at Apple devices specifically for this. And uh, hopefully, learning some of the neat tricks that you can use to teach concepts on an iOS device will help you to teach your students and they can then generalize those skills. So just thinking back to my own training uh, to become a TBI and any professional development I've done, I've learned all these great things that voiceover can do, but not really learned how to teach someone how to use voiceover until I started my CADIS program with Western Michigan University in the fall, um, no, spring semester of 2020. So I'm gonna turn off my camera here and just share my opening slide. It's called Teaching with Voiceover. Much of the information I'm sharing in this presentation is from the article Teaching the iPhone with Voiceover Accessibility to People with Visual Impairments. And that was written by Brian Selyusnak in 2016. The great thing about voiceover is, in general, the fundamental basics for voiceover don't really change that much over time. Occasionally a big feature will change, but in general, it's pretty much stayed the same. So if you can take the principles from this presentation, which is adapted from Brian Selyusnak, then you'll be able to teach your students and they can generalize those skills and we have, have that foundational point for um, helping our students become more independent with um, voiceover. So I said before, I am in my CADIS program. I've been a TVI since 2009, and I have worked uh, with earlier intervention, and then the pre-K through age 22 year old range, and then I supervise student teachers occasionally. Assistive technology really is my passion, so sometimes when I talk about AT, I get really excited and go fast. My goal in this presentation is to go slow, and I'm going to encourage you in a few points to just pause the video and try out what I'm showing you on the screen so that you can play with it too. I think one of the easiest ways to continue being good with JAWS or uh, VoiceOver or Zoom or TalkBack on an, an Android device is to just play around with it. So when I first gave this presentation, I asked, I was a live one, I asked everybody, have you picked up an iOS device in the last six months and played with it? And a lot of people hadn't. And so the takeaway for me from that is we don't have to train constantly in the technology, especially if we're not teaching it right then and there. But I think in this profession, it's really valuable for us to spend 10 or 15 minutes couple times a month just playing with the software, playing with the accessibility features so that we're familiar with what's available so that when our students need to problem solve something we're familiar and comfortable and then can teach it to our students. Um, and this next part says, have you noticed anything new or exciting with the iOS devices? This presentation is from February of 2019 and um, in September of 20, sorry this is from February 2020. In September of 2019, so almost a year ago now, iOS 13 came out and had a bunch of new accessibility features in it. And again, this September um, 2020, iOS 14 is going to come out and there are a lot of changes for sighted people and those with vision impairments or need those who need accessibility features for using um, the whole operating system. So again, I just encourage you to occasionally switch on voiceover on your iOS device or turn on Zoom and see how it interacts with some of the apps that you're playing with. I wanna start off my actual presentation looking at what accessibility looks like, what the menu looks like in the general settings in an iOS device. Now I wanna tell you that I am beta testing for Apple. You can, anybody can join the public beta test and find out what's going to change in the next iOS update. And um, so I'm beta testing for 14. I beta tested for 13. And I just want to tell you that this screen is going to change when that update comes out. And I'm not going to show you the beta version of it because beta can change. But I just want you to know that soon this will be changing. And when you hear that it changes, just check it out. So I'm going to share a video here and we can watch it together. And I might pause and comment along the way. 
So here we go. Before we start really delving into voiceover and the gestures that you can teach to your students or clients, I want to take some time to look at the ways that you can modify voiceover and change the way it works for you. You can um, turn off and turn on some features and change some things to really customize how it's working. So you can find the accessibility features in your settings app um, under general, which is at the bottom of the screen when you first turn on these or open the settings app. Or if you're like me and you don't want to go through all those different options, you can pull down at the top of the screen and a search bar will come up and you can type in whatever you're looking for. My settings crashed, so I had to open it again pull down typing in settings and I go through these a little fast I'm gonna pause occasionally so here you have the accessibility screen and you'll notice that there are tons of different accessibility features that you can change from voiceover zoom the magnifier text size motion spoken content audio descriptions all the way down to physical and motor there are some audio things that you can change for students who are deaf and hard of hearing I'm gonna look at the vision one specifically actually just voiceover since this training is voiceover specific so when you're in voiceover I'm gonna press that um, in here you can um, turn voiceover on and off you can change your speaking rate when you go into the speech setting you can change voices you can add pronunciations for words that uh, Siri or in this case Samantha is saying incorrectly um, from time to time you can change the pitch um, you can turn off pitch changing you can detect languages and you can add new languages so I'm gonna go ahead and go through some of these things there are a lot of different English voices different dialects for English you can add in you can add a lot of different languages in here too if you have someone who's a speaks multiple languages in in verbosity here you can change the way that punctuation is spoken you can turn off hints um, voiceover is pretty verbose and if you're annoyed with everything that voiceover is saying you can turn off some of those features so I'm gonna kind of go through these things um, one at a time change your punctuation speaking turn off hints um, you can change the pitch or turn off changing pitch when you're deleting things or capital letters and all of those different features here. I like that you can have do nothing, uh, play sounds, speak the actual words. There are haptics that you can add in and take turn off. Um, so I'm going to go back here in a second after just giving you some time to look at all the different features that are on the screen here media descriptions you if you have a braille display set up it can show the media descriptions in braille rather than speaking it so we're going to go down here um, my, right now my phone in this case is in airplane mode so that text messages and alerts don't come through and interrupt the video so i'm going to turn that off and then i just kind of want to talk about the screen before i start going through it you can change the output of the braille on a refreshable braille display that you're connecting and you can choose something like a braille note and put that in um, braille display mode and connect it to an iPad or an iPhone so it can output and contract it and input in uh, uncontracted or in 8 dot braille and the way that you're typing from that refreshable braille display can go in in a variety of ways too. You, um, you can change where your status cells are to let you know what's going on. You can do Nemeth or UEB while you're in braille mode. You can have an on-screen keyboard. You can change the way you navigate, whether your pages are going to pan or not pan, whether there's word wrapping, not word wrapping. And then if you have some people who press the keys on accident, you can change the alert display duration and key to bounce duration. So that's um, pretty interesting. We're going to go through some of these screens now. Uh, or maybe I chose not to. I just chose to talk about them. For audio, excuse me, for audio, you can adjust the speaking rate of voiceover, um, change the speech, change the verbosity, uh, change the braille and stuff. We're going to go kind of through some of those screens right now as I'm talking to myself. So you have the volumes, you have all these feedback features you can turn on and off for apps, for braille, for text editing, for your system. I know one complaint from a lot of uh, voiceover users who are extremely adept is that voiceover is a lot more verbose than TalkBack, which is available on Android systems. So um, we can teach our students and clients that they can turn off some of that verbosity. So moving on here. 
here's a, something that's really interesting. So I'm going to go to this screen. For pretty much everything that you can do with voiceover, you can have a Bluetooth keyboard connected and you can, um, if a gesture is difficult for your student because of some physical issues or it's hard to remember, you can add their own gestures in and you can also see whatever keyboard de uh, shortcut is default and then add your own uh, keyboard shortcuts in there. So I have a one-handed um, typist and it can be difficult for him even with sticky keys excuse me sticky keys to use a lot of the keyboard commands um, he also has some intellectual disability so remembering lots of keys at one time can be difficult so we're in the process of figuring out if we want to add in um, unique keyboard shortcuts just for him to use so those are available for pretty much everything that you can do inside of voiceover and we're gonna look at a few more of those uh, I gave myself here some time to talk so I'm just gonna pull up another example here the one finger swipe right to move the next item, which would be the arrow to the right, and you can add in something else if that's not gonna work for your student. So here's another for labeling that you can change. And this is a pretty exhaustive list and can be overwhelming, so you don't wanna start changing things right away. Then you have activities for programming your voiceover settings that you can change. Um, another pretty exhaustive list. This is all pretty in depth advanced stuff so that's why I'm not going too much into it I'm just showing you that you can add things to your rotor option here um, and remove things if you only want to have a couple different options available right now I have like 10 or so things enabled you know, your rotor actions right now are mine are set up to change the home screen you can change your typing style and the amount of typing feedback you get as far as if it's going to read words characters both or nothing um, and you can change your modifier key if you have someone who doesn't like the, mod the default modifier keys set up. So we're getting close to the end of all of our features on here. I just want to show you the whole screen one more time. I'm going to pause the video. Oop, I'm going to go back now. Um, so we really only just looked in the last seven minutes at voiceover options, but just know that there are so many features available still for Zoom, Magnifier, the way that the, the the way that the text is displayed, the motion for the phone or iPad, and what content is spoken, and then the options for audio description. So if you have any questions and want to reach out to me and ask about voiceover things or whatever, you know, I'm always available to help chat and problem solve, and we can make the iPad work for almost anybody. So that's my video on just an introduction to voiceover in general. I'm going to pull up another video here that we can watch together. And again, I might pause this one and talk about it as it goes through. Someone suggested I show how you can change the speaking rate of voiceover when you're using it. So there are two ways. One of them is using the rotor function. And when you're using the rotor function, you're thinking of an old rotor, rotary phone where you um, move, you put your finger where the number is and you kind of slide it around. So it's very similar. You keep one finger in one position on the phone and you'll take another finger and kind of slide it around as you're, as you're listening for different options on the rotor. So for me, I keep my thumb in place and move that index finger from the same finger and slide it around as I'm listening for um, whatever rotor function I'm looking for. It, it's a, one of the more complicated gestures in voiceover, so some people use um, one finger from each hand to do it, and it can be kind of tricky conceptually for younger children, but I just want to kind of show you what that looks like here. Voiceover on. Calendar. Monday. February 10th. Characters. Words. Speaking rate. 70%. 75%. 80%. 85%. So you'll notice that I, I knew where it was going to be, so I used my thumb on the phone, slid my finger around till I got to speaking rate, and then once I found what I was looking for, I flicked up to increase, and I flicked down to decrease the volume, or the speed, the rate. And so the same flicking up and flicking down is how you would use and uh, navigate things by headings and words and stuff too, but uh, you can listen here again. 80%, 75%, 70%, 65%. Containers, headings, actions, characters, actions, head, con speaking rate, 70%, 75%, 80%, 85%, 90%, 95%, 100%, 100%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 95%, 
So that's just another example of me using the rotor to find the speaking rate, flicking up to make it go faster, and then flicking down to make it go slower. Um, around 65% is what I usually like, so that's kind of what I left it at there. So now I'm going to bring up another video here. Voice over on. Calendar. That's the one I was just using. Over. So, so in this video, um, I've slowed down voiceover a lot and I'm using a different voice because another suggestion was to talk about how to change voices on here. So when you're using voiceover and you're in the accessibility menu, which by the way, in another video, I misspoke and said it was still under general. It's been moved out of general. It's on the main menu now. Um, but anyway, when you're in the accessibility and you're in voiceover, you have about halfway down your screen an option to change your speaking rate. And when you flick or glide your finger to speaking rate, you do a long hold or a, a harder hold on there, and then you can slide your finger left and right to increase and decrease the rate. So I'm gonna show you that, and then I'm gonna show you some different features with changing voices. All of them annoy me, so I don't stay on them for super long. I just go back to the default. So here we go. It's over on, act, dismiss, 30%, 47, 61%. Speech, button, voice. Samantha, button. Pronunciation, add new language. But English, speak English, English. Alex, but Allison, Ava, Fred, but Nikki. Select Siri female, button. Siri female, using. Selected, Siri female, using for. So you or your users or your students can try out different voices um, before selecting them if you want. And when you are flicking through or gliding through, when it says Siri female, um, flick or glide to the right and you can um, try it out. Or you can just tap, double tap one Siri, like when you're on it, tap and then, sh or whatever voice, it'll change your voice. So here, let's go through this again. Siri, English, back button, English, 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 out, 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 Samantha, button, Samantha. Swipe up or down. Selected, Samantha. Sam English, back button, English, Eng English, Eng English, Alec, Alec, Ava, button, Ava. Speak sample, button. Hello, my name is Ava. Ava, edit. So I'm going to stop there. Um, I did try out some of the other voices, and you can download them and try them and experiment with them too. But to me, pretty much everybody sounds annoying or super computerized, and I can't handle it. So I didn't do too much on that in this video. But I wanted you to see those two things, to use the rotor or the option and accessibility to change the speed, and then how you can change the voices to find one that works for you. So I'm going to put myself back on the screen here for a second. Uh, now would be a great time if you have an iOS device to try out the rotor. I'm going to show you with my fingers what I do. I'll put my iPad up on the screen. Maybe it'll show. So to do the rotor on, the, on our screen, I'm showing you my thumb is down and I just spin my finger along the screen to move a, like going around a clock, um, a, an analog clock. Just spin it around, keeping that, my thumb straight. Other people choose to keep one of their fingers in its location and then move a second finger from another hand around. So they might use both of their index fingers. So try um, enabling voiceover in most, uh, on most devices, iPads, you have the home button. Oh, um, the black screen's not working for me. You have the home button that you can triple tap, usually if it's already enabled, or you can go into your accessibility features and enable voiceover. And then just play around with the rotor, the speech, um, the, the speed of speech, their speed, the rate is un automatically on the rotor, so you can change it up and down. So when you um, spin around, you'll wait until you hear speaking rate, and then you'll flick up to go faster or down to go slower. Play around with that a little bit. Then after you do that, I want you to go into your settings with voiceover on, and I want you to, tr to try out um, flicking. So you're gonna flick to the right to go next, and then flick to the left to kind of go back on. through some settings, try that. And then I want you to try what I think is the best way to navigate on the screen. And that is just starting with wherever I am oriented to. We'll talk about this a little bit in another video, but just start where you know, keep your finger there with a very light touch and just slide it around. You'll get some haptic vibrations on your screen if you have a newer iPad or iPhone and you can just move your finger around your screen until you find what you're looking for. So oops, I just lost my earbud. So pause the video, 
try that out, and then come back and we're going to talk about some more teaching strategies. So hopefully you pause the video and you tried out using some voiceover, gliding your finger around the screen, and you played around with the rotor a little bit. Those are some valuable tools that you should probably have under your belt if you're going to start teaching voiceover to a student. And uh, there's some things like for the longest time when I was teaching voiceover, I really thought that I just needed to flick. I didn't realize that I could just glide my finger around the screen. So kind of moving forward, some more initial tips for teaching someone voiceover. We want to start, this is, comes back to Brian's sell you snack. The other stuff I was talking about was kind of my own stuff and now we're back to Brian. Um, teach your students to identify similarities that exist between known and unfamiliar apps. So he recommends we start teaching with one app, get really familiar and good in that app, and then we start using other apps. We want to establish a basic comfort with the voice feedback. A lot of times when we're initially teaching voiceover and JAWS for the first time, that voice can be really difficult for students to adjust to. So we want to make the first several lessons something doable, achievable, and not frustrating for students. Again, we're going to teach basic orientation skills. So it is appropriate for an o &M specialist to teach some of these skills. It doesn't have to be just the TBI. You guys can tag team and teach them together. The orientation skills that we teach students from an o &M perspective are relevant for using iOS devices or, or any other device as well. And then Brian says that you should start training inside the phone app. So. Let's talk a little bit more about that. Some strategies for teaching comfort and building emotional skills are to counteract that learner's desire to press fingers down on different areas of the screen. So a lot of times our children, our students, our clients have low vision and they are gonna to wanna to use their vision and push their finger where they think it should go. So we're gonna teach our students to glide over the surface of the screen. We're gonna think about, you, you might also wanna turn off this. Uh, the cur turn on the curtain so the screen is not visible and that's something that you can do also as a sighted person when practicing using voiceover you can enable the screen but as the student is gliding around the screen before you're even teaching anything about the screen you're verbally explaining what each item or app or area is and you're going to use this whenever you're teaching a new app to a, a student or a client um, so that they can draw back on that foundational knowledge from where you started teaching so let's talk a little bit here in this next video uh, about how we can teach some of those skills. And I think, I think this video is the one where we're going to talk about um, adding a contact to your phone, which is where Brian says we should start for everybody regardless of age. And there's a lot of value for teaching young children, even as young as preschool and kindergarten, how to work within um, the call menu, the phone menu. So here we go. On the screen is an image of my phone. I have activated voiceover and we'll show a video in a second of what it looks like to do a slow glide as you're orienting yourself to the Apple device. It works the same way on the iPhone as it would work on an iPad. First, my fingers will go through the array of apps. Then I'll move to the bottom and, and look, go through the dock. And then finally, I'll go up to the top and look at the status bar. So I spoke too soon, this uh, video is just about gliding around the device. And you'll notice that I called the apps, the app part of the app screen, the array. That's the terminology that we're going to use for teaching where apps are. So my phone is in a one, two, three, four, five, six uh, row, four column array, depending on your zoom, um, how zoomed in the, you can have large buttons or small buttons. You might have a different array iPads and iPhones, different iPhones also have different array settings. And then the bottom part of the screen that doesn't change where mine has phone, messages, mail, and clock, that's your dock. That that does that you can change, but in general it's gonna stay the same between all the different screens. So those are some vocabulary words that are important for us to know when we're teaching our students because when they go work with say rehab counselors or they go to a camp and they're learning AT at a camp, those are the, the same phrases and words that um, re, uh, other technology people are going to be using, so we need to also teach them to our students. You'll notice that 
um, you'll hear a clicking sound between each app. If you skip an app and you're moving too quickly, then you'll hear two of the clicks and you'll know that you went too fast. And then if you're at a point on the screen where there's not an app, it will make another sound and you're, you're gonna hear that too. So let's go ahead and watch the video. Calendar, Monday, January 27th, Fo camera, maps, safari, settings, product, notes, files, seesaw, weather max, tiny scan, weather map, messenger, outlook, finance, expensify, ways, Facebook, Amazon, Gmail, mini print, double, mini print, Walmart, doc, page two of nine, adjustable, mini print, page two of nine, doc, messages, mail, clock, G, mess, whoops, map, 42% battery, Thompson 5G, cellular, four of seven, screen recording, seven, 24, seven. So I'm gonna pause this video. When you're teaching the basic um, orientation of even the home screen, it's important for your students and clients to know that they can always access the time in the top left of their screen. And they can find out if they're connected to the Wi-Fi or the cell phone networks on the top right of the screen. They can check their battery there. They can move between pages um, on their device when they go down towards the bottom just above the dock between the array and the dock. So those are the orientation skills that our students need to have within the general um, screen of your phone. And then you got to see how gliding might look. You might teach them to start at the top left, glide to the right, go down, and then go reverse their route on the second row, go down, go forward to the right on the third row, and just kind of do that systematic pattern, searching around and finding what's on their screen. So now is that time when we want to teach about focus. And we teach that with JAWS, we teach it with any sort of like voiceover or talk back. And when something is in focus, that's what the technology said last. That's what's highlighted visually on the screen for someone with some vision or someone who's um, able to access that sense. And then once something is in focus, in order to, to activate it with voiceover, we're gonna double tap. Or if you're gliding your finger around, you can glide your finger and tap a second finger on the screen to activate that. So I'm gonna go back to my video here, uh, my me, and here we have my iPad on the screen. I'm just gonna, oh, if I can enable it somehow so you can see. Does, there, oh, that sees me. So you can um, glide around your screen. You're seeing that on the screen. You find whatever you're looking for and take another finger and tap it anywhere on the screen. And that's gonna activate without having to pick up your finger and put it down. A lot of times when we're picking our fingers up and we're tapping around the screen or we're double tapping and we might lose our orientation on the screen or we might accidentally focus and activate something else on the screen. So gliding around, finding what you're looking for, tapping that second finger, boom, you've activated whatever you're looking for. So um, when you're doing that, it's called a split tap. When you're doing that split tapping, you cannot move that first finger on the screen or it will change your focus. So that's that whole concept of knowing when to stop is really gonna be important here. Now, before we move on, we need to know two things. We need to know how to switch apps and how to close apps. And so here's a video next. Um, because so many students are using iPhones with no home button, I wanna show you on and like my phone doesn't have a home button. I want to show you that how things are a little different when there is a home button versus not having a home button. I think before you can move on to any of the other things we're going to talk about in this presentation, you have to know two things, and those are how to switch apps and how to close your app or go to the home screen. So we're going to watch a video of me doing this on my phone on iPhone X and later or operating systems that are more recent, you'll drag one finger up from the bottom of the screen until you hear two, um, I'm sorry, till you feel two vibrations or hear three tones and then you'll lift your finger and you'll enter that app switcher mode and then you just swipe. And then if you have an iPad or an iOS device that has the home button, you'll just double click the home button. But since there are a lot of different options, I wanted to show that. And then in the second part of this video, I'll show how to go to the home screen. If you're using an iPhone X or later, you'll drag a finger up from the bottom like you do for switching the apps, but instead you'll feel one vibration or hear two tones and you'll lift your finger and it will go to the home screen 
or if you're using an iOS device that has a home button, you just press your home button and it goes home. So since that's not always intuitive, I wanted to show what that looks like. We're going to play this video here and watch it. Voice over on. Calendar. Wednesday. F home. App switcher. We weather map. Weather. Safari. Facebook. Act mail. Active. Twitter. Act Chrome. Active. Chrome. Chrome. Address and search bar. Open browsing preferences. Button. Calendar. Ways. So it's kind of hard to hear the tones when we're doing screen recording, but um, you definitely can hear that one tone for going to the home screen or two tones for switching apps. So I just wanted to show what that looks like, and here you go. Um, when you are using VoiceOver to change between, um, to switch apps or to go to the home screen, if you accidentally go too far, you can slide your finger back down and it will, you know, kind of correct that for you. And, and that can take some practice. So um, that might be something that you teach your student or client how to do before you move into actually teaching using VoiceOver. So I'm just going to go back a little bit and review what we've talked about so far. We looked at the different accessibility features that are relevant to VoiceOver. We looked at how to slide or glide your finger around the screen. And we looked at how to use the app switcher or go to home. So at this point, I would like for you to pause the video and just practice turning on VoiceOver if you have a device that does not have a home button and practice switching apps using the app switcher. You're gonna feel those two vibrations or hear those three tones or you can um, go to the home screen. So just try that out, get, get a feel for it and then we're gonna move on to um, what's next. Hopefully you have paused and practiced. So now we're st we still haven't really started teaching voiceover at this point yet. We might be several lessons into just introducing your student to an iOS device and using screen uh, reading software on it. So this is a good point to introduce that help mode. So if you are using an iOS device uh, with voiceover already enabled, you can use a four finger double tap to enter help mode. And the really cool thing about this is when you're in help mode, you can try a gesture out and it will tell you what's going on. So it will provide auditory messages describing those different gestures and their functions without actually doing anything. So that's a good way if your student says, um, <clears throat> if my student says, Amanda, I can't remember how I'm gonna switch apps. What do I gotta do? So then I can say, well, use your four finger double tap, enter help mode and try the things out that you think it might be until you find the one that's right. And what, what playing around with help mode does is it empowers your student to be independent when you're not there and it allows them to take charge and ownership of their learning so that they can do things without having to always come to an adult or using the fact that they can't remember as an excuse for not doing something. So voiceover help allows students to explore voiceover with options, option, explore voiceover options with support from Siri instead of a person and it provides an opportunity for problem solving when you're not around. And ultimately that's my goal with technology. I don't want my students to only use the technology when I'm there or only be able to use it if their paraprofessional has been in on a lesson and learned what I'm teaching. I want my student to be as independent as possible right away from the start so they don't have any of this learned helplessness going on. So this is another video here. Um, we'll watch it. This is a short video to show you what you might hear when you enter help mode using voiceover with a four finger double tap. Um, I'm going to go through a lot of the gestures that you can do on an iOS device. It's not all inclusive, but it at least gives you an idea of what that sounds like and um, shows you some of the different gestures you can do. I did not do the rotor commands because we're going to cover that later. So here's the video. Wednesday, Feb, starting hell to stop hell. Perform a four finger double tap or two finger scrub or press escape on the keyboard. Touch, speak item. Two finger single tap, toggle speech. Three finger single tap, read item summary. Move to last item. Two finger double tap. 
So you don't need to listen to me uh, or listen to voiceover tell you what I'm doing, but now would be a great time to pause, use an iOS device, use a four finger double tap to enable help mode, and just try out some different gestures. See if you learned something new that you didn't know was there um, and play around with it. And then um, think about some different ways that help mode might be useful for some of your students. So pause the video, try it out and come back. Awesome. Hopefully you've paused again and played with help mode. Again, four finger double tap. Now Brian Selyusnak talks about orientation to the screen. That it's not just for, I added this part, not just for orientation, it's not just for using canes. So he recommends starting everybody, once you're ready to start direct instruction and actually using voiceover, he recommends that it's a prerequisite for learning every other voiceover feature to start with that phone app and adding contacts. Even if you're talking about a four-year-old, it's important to explain that tabs are usually along the bottom of apps. And the reason is, let me just pause there for a second. The phone, in adding a contact, the whole process of adding a contact, you are gonna use almost all the different types of selections that are available in an iOS device. You're going to have, um, I'll show you in the video, but um, it, so you have all those different concepts that you're teaching in one place already. You have tabs along the bottom of apps that you can explain that are usually along the bottom of apps. It's in your um, phone. And almost every app that has tabs is gonna have it at the bottom if there are multiple pages. Done buttons, edit buttons, add buttons, those are usually in the corners. So if your student is doing something and looking for a done or an edit or an add, you teach them at this point, those are usually in the corners and how to find the corners. So adding contacts requires the user to explain all four corners of the screen, add and done, type with the on-screen keyboard or a Bluetooth keyboard, or to use the microphone to speak whatever they wanna type. They have to switch focus between the keyboard and the app, and they have to use features such as the keyboard, the keypad, and picker screens. So picker screens are, um, if you're familiar with iOS devices, when you're like putting your birthday in and you have the month, they have to scroll through until you get to my birthday's in September, so all the way down to September, or you have to find the year of something, that's a picker screen. So they have to be able to use all these different screens. Um, and so you're, you're getting all these relevant functional things, but also they can, you know, put their own family members, their own friends in their phones or on their iPad so that they can send them an email or they can send them a message on an iOS device if it's um, not got that locked down. So these are not only relevant as far as using the tools within VoiceOver, but they're relevant because they are, you know, they have to do with your student or your client's actual real life. It's not just some isolated skill and some isolated app that their teacher randomly decided to use. So moving on uh, to here's the kind of process that we're going to be talking about when adding contacts. You're going to open your phone app, search along the bottom of the screen to find the contacts tab. When you hear contacts, you double tap like you're saying, yeah, I heard that. That's what I want. Yes. Then the learner will find the list of contacts. You can check the four corners of the screen and find add. Then once you've found add, glide or flick from item to item on the screen. Once you've entered information in the bottom of this but in the bottom half of the screen, refocus on the top part with a tap. And so that's going to make more sense when we watch the video. So uh, here we go. The video goes a little fast, so if you need to pause it and go back to watch parts, that's totally fine. In this video, we're going to look at using VoiceOver to add contacts to your phone or iOS device. This is um, one of the recommended ways for teaching the iPhone with VoiceOver because you have to use a lot of the different features of VoiceOver in just one app. So instead of having to change apps to try different features, you can just do it all together in one. So you will teach your client or student how to change focus between the app and different pickers. So you have the picker for like a birthday, you have a keyboard, you have a keypad inside the contacts part of the phone app, 
and you're changing focus between the two, you're using the glide finger movement or you're flicking between different options and it just kind of has everything all together. And if your student or client can add multiple contacts in a decent amount of time, you know that they've met the prerequisite skills for just basic orientation of the screen and they can move on to start transferring and generalizing those skills to different apps. It's important for you to explain to your students or clients before you start doing this that most of the time the important things like adding and being done features are in the top are either on the top or bottom of the screen and are typically in the corner. So if they're looking for something like add or to be done with whatever they're doing, um, using the glide finger movement around the top and bottom and in the corners is going to help them find those things. So let's go ahead and look at the video. I might pause a couple times in between um, to point out some things or I might just summarize it at the end. We'll see how it goes. Wednesday. Doc. Phone. Doc. Phone. App. Selected. Favorite. Recents. Contacts. Ta Groups. Con Favorites. Select keypad voicemail tab five. Select keypad contacts. Le section index adjust to dictate add button. So you'll see here that I was started at the top left of my screen, went down to the bottom left, then to the bottom right. I accidentally hit voicemail, so I had to remember how I got to contacts. I went back to my contacts, started back at the bottom right of my screen, moved my finger up to the right, and found add. I know where add is, but I just wanted to give you an example of what it was, what might, what it might be like, and I wanted to have an, a mistake so you could see what that might look like and how your student or client might have to problem solve that. We'll continue on. Text field, last name, company, la tech, add photo, new contact, done, add photo, text field, is editing, first name, character, insertion point at end, cap G, cap, cap N, cap M, cap M, M, K, F, D, L, L, I'm sorry, I skipped ahead a, a little bit here, I paused the wrong thing, but it's really important at this point, if you're not using a Bluetooth keyboard, that your student or client is familiar with how the keyboard is set up, whether you're using QWERTY or a different type of keyboard. Now you could have a Bluetooth keyboard where they're typing it in themselves, but if they're using the on-screen one, it's going to take them a long time if they're not familiar with the basic layout for how to type in the names. So that's just an important thing to know. A G B B N N now I'm going to pause that video to just mention here um, my caveat, my little tip that we should begin teaching typing skills to our students when they're very young. As soon as, b before we expect them to be typing, they need to already know how to type. So if they have a classroom assignment to type their um, words for spelling in first grade on Spelling City, then our students who are blind and visually impaired by first grade need to have familiarization with the keyboard so that they can type along with their peers. So they would have to know where all the letters are. So I just want to toss that out there that we should be teaching that much earlier than most of us are, including myself. I, I'm, I, I think it's a, a place for everyone to improve. J I I R E E. Another thing you notice is that um, the tone of Siri's voice is lower when she when you're just focusing on the letter, and then when you actually type the letter, her voice goes a, a little bit higher, an octave or so higher. So that can be a clue for your students. Comp last name, text field, last name, text field, insertion point at end. So when you're switching between the keyboard and then the neck, like the next field, you're just going to tap in that upper part of the field to switch between the keyboard, the editing mode, and finding the fields that you're typing in. And cap V, cap C, cap X, cap, cap V, Victor, cap B, cap B. There I modeled how much longer it might take if your student or client is not familiar with the QWERTY keyboard layout. F y, T, R, H, R, R, O, F, delete. R. Delete. H. F. V. C. F. R. 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 E. 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 D. D. E. E. F. B. N. N. 
Earlier we I said that you can teach your student how to activate the microphone and use speech to input some of these things. The, 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 ca the important thing to note here for names especially is that um, Siri or whatever you want to call your device doesn't always know how to spell the things correctly. So when you're putting names into a contact log, if you say a last name, it may not get it correct. So again, uh, yes, speech to text is great but also our students need to have familiar, familiarization with the keyboard layout, knowing where the erase or back button is. And so that is really a prerequisite to doing the foundational voiceover skills that Brian saw use next says we should do. Add, add last name, company, add phone, ringtone, add, add phone, add ph text field, is editing, home, but home, button, selected, home, can work. Air open. Can activate. And here default. I accidentally um, did the Selected. finger drag home. down from the top. Work. School. iPhone. Mobile. Main. Home fat. Work fat. Home f main. Mobile. Mobile. Text field. Is editing. Phone. Insertion. At 5. Again, just like with the QWERTY keyboard, your student or client is going to have to know the number pad in order to add phone numbers. So that would be a nice prerequisite prerequisite skill or concept to have before working on an iOS device. Five, four. And in thinking about the number pad, that's another push for us to start having our students type their lunch codes in independently from the very start of school if they're not already. Just a side note. Four. Four. Zero. Zero. Eight. Five. Eight. Eight. Four. Four. Six. Three. 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 Two. Two five eight zero zero seven seven add add phone add email add e ringtone text add you are add 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 birthday button so you see add you birth, can add so add many birthday, different things add birth text field fed five February here. picker February March April May five July so you select June. your picker by the way as a side note for some reason, every time I've practiced this in June, the first time it says five, it drives me absolutely nuts. July, July five. So you sel you get your picker in focus and then you slide up or slide down to change whatever the picker is. I'm not gonna watch this whole video now because we're already at the 47 mark for this video, but it, this adding a contact to your phone is really an easy way to practice so many different skills that you can, um, you could even put in email addresses for your students if you saw that earlier, they could add email addresses. Um, so this video is available on YouTube if you search for voiceover to add contacts or TV tips from Amanda, it's on there if you wanna continue watching that video. So, uh, and then you would navigate the, the four corners of the screen until you found done, which is in the top right, select done and then that contact has been added. So now that we can add contacts, and your um, Brian says that the once your student is able to add five contacts independently in a decent amount of time, so we're not talking 30 minutes to add one contact, they've mastered that skill and they're ready to move on to the next thing. And he says next, um, you look for similarities between apps. Usually, just below the status bar is a heading that will tell the learner about what's on your screen. So. To the left and right of the header are usually navigation buttons to go previous and back. The notes app is slightly different in that the new button is on the bottom right. So you can always reinforce by teaching um, that your second app, you could teach whatever. There's a new app out called uh, Code Jumper on iOS devices, iPads only, not iPhones. Um, you, so you could teach the Code Jumper app as like a fun, reinforcing game second app thing and then maybe your third app if you're trying to be purposeful could be the notes app which is a little different and the new button is on the bottom right and so you're reinforcing that whole skill of checking the four corners so we still have to be really purposeful in what apps we're choosing to teach and then making sure we're, we're reinforcing revisiting those orientation skills for that screen and finding those main buttons that are along the outside perimeter top bottom and four corners so if we were live at this point, we were gonna talk about favorite voiceover features. We've been in this 
video for 50 minutes. We have covered a lot of information. It's probably, you're probably feeling a little overloaded. So at this point, I wanna tell you again about my favorite feature, which is the screen curtain. Uh, when voiceover is enabled, you can do a three finger triple tap and it will turn your screen black. Um, it's great for helping students who have low vision feel successful when they're not using their vision. So you're setting them up for success, allowing them to use their screen without their vision and showing them that they can do it. It's great for students because it gives them some privacy if they've got their earbuds in, their peers can't see what's going on on their screen. And then for teachers like us, we can turn on that black screen and practice and we don't have to get a blindfold or whatever. So. We talked earlier about iOS 14 coming out in September. There are some extremely humongous changes coming. So if you could teach iOS 13 now to students, the changes will be um, easier to kind of handle. There's a NAP library that's now available. I'm going to, um, let me see if I can show on the screen the app library without um, showing my personal information. Putting my phone in airplane mode and I'm going to try screen mirroring to, um, I'm going to put, where's my, have, oop, I got to move my little recording button. So here's Zoom. I'm going to share my iPad screen um, on my phone. I'm putting it on here. So it's, it's up at the top. You'll be able to see parts of it um, since I can't, oh, I can kind of move. So I can kind of move my screen a little bit. So now I'm going to go. I'm not using voiceover, but just in general, you have an app library now. It automatically takes all of your apps um, on the far right screen and puts them into, uh, it automatically puts them into groups like social, productivity, utilities, games. You're seeing them on the screen, lifestyle, entertainment. So your new apps are always going to be, ooh, your new apps are always going to be at the top. If you pull down, you can search through your apps. There's also a search menu at the top of your screen. Um, oh, there we go. You can search the app library at the top, which is pretty cool. And then you also have the ability to pin messages to the top of your message screen. I'm not gonna show you that because I didn't go through and clear out messages and there's some personal things in there. But um, just note that you'll, when iOS 14 comes out, you'll be able to pin messages. There is a built-in translator app that is live. That's really cool. I'm gonna put me back in here. There's a live translator app, so you can speak English into your phone and it will present and speak if you want another language. I have a video on YouTube that uh, you can search for uh, in TBI Tips from Amanda. Um, but you can also um, have a student's parent email you. You put in the email, it translates it to English. You respond in English, it translates it back to whatever language the parent originally sent it in. You copy, you paste, you send. And so communication with people who don't speak English is gonna be a lot easier. And then it adds in another feature where you can now set up a voiceover gesture for tapping the back of your screen. It only works on iPhones, it does not work on iPads, but you can enable voiceover, say, um, possibly with tapping on the back of your, thing, of your screen, or you can um, enable another commonly used feature that's maybe harder for you to remember. Um, and then the other thing that it's do doing is it will, voiceover will now read pictures um, text within pictures. So um, let me stop screen sharing my screen for a minute and then I'm going to pull up a picture here. Let's see. Oh, here we go. This is what I shared on um, Facebook the other day. So we're going to share my screen. going to, I have to do it on the computer and then I have to do it on my phone when I'm using Zoom. And so I like to record within Zoom, it like makes my life easier. So here's my screen. I'm gonna um, turn the orientation of my screen, so hopefully, there we go. Oh, now it's humongous, that's okay. You get the general gist. So I'm gonna turn voiceover on. Oops, I'm gonna turn my screen off, let's try that again. Doop. Highlighting, I'm focusing on my picture. And now I'm going to turn voiceover on. Maybe. Photos. Siri search. Photo. August 12th. Actions available. Oh, it's not working. So, um, bummer. 
I, like I said before, I am beta testing the iOS 14 and it's still glitchy with reading the text within images. If the image is a good image and it has good quality text, it's, it's decent at reading all the text on the screen. But if it's a graphic that was created by somebody without accessibility in mind, it does not always read everything on the screen. So I, there's a lot of room for improvement there, but at least people who are blind or visually impaired can start to get some kind of idea of what's happening in images on Facebook. And it will kind of give it, if it's a picture of a flower, um, it's not, it doesn't do it all the time from when I've been playing on it, but in iOS 14 with voiceover enabled, it will sometimes say picture of a flower. So that way it can kind of give some uh, description for images that people haven't already put a picture description or alter alternative text and alt text in there. So um, I got excited at the end because I was talking about updates and I started going really fast. Don't stress, those updates are not out yet. Those co are coming in September and they're really exciting and I think we're making baby steps towards having equity in technology for students who are blind and visually impaired with people who are sighted. So this uh, voiceover lesson was really long. I'm gonna do Zoom in a different one because I think that if I did Zoom now, it would just be too much all at one time. So I hope this was helpful and gave you a starting point for that process of teaching voiceover to a new person or even just going back and reviewing it for someone who's not uh, using it consistently and independently and it will give you some ideas for how to really increase that level of independence for your students and your clients. And I hope you have a great day and a good start to your school year.